hello viewers welcome to another exciting video uh, and this in this particular video we will be looking at the december 2020 science paper one question b1 and the question reads figure b1.1 below shows a simple pendulum suspended from a fixed point figure b1.1 shows a simple pendulum suspended from a point from a fixed point now if we analyze our pendulum if we analyze our pendulum uh, there we find that we've got uh, the string there we've got the bob there and it is initially at point a then we also have a view of the pendulum at point b then the string is actually attached to a fixed support at that fixed point. So having all that in mind, we can therefore proceed and look at what lies below the diagram. And they are saying that the bob is slightly pulled to position A and then released. So the bob is slightly pulled to position A and then released. Now, slightly means small. It has, it has been given a very small uh, angular displacement. So the initial angular displacement is very small or the amplitude is very small. So let's go to A. A, state one factor that does not affect the period of the pendulum state one factor that does not affect the period of the pendulum now in this case let us first look at the factors that affect the period of a pendulum before we go to the factors that do not now one one of the factors that affect the period of a pendulum is the length of the pendulum the length of the pendulum affects the period of oscillation. The second one is the acceleration due to gravity. The acceleration due to gravity. So these two factors, the length of the pendulum and the acceleration due to gravity, will affect the period of oscillation. The remaining things do not affect the period of oscillation. Now, uh, I know they will be questioned like but what if we pulled the pendulum very much now we need to be careful uh, with that statement because in this particular question we have been told that the bob is slightly pulled to position a it means that the angle at which it was displaced from the rest or the equilibrium position is very small and according to the Pennsylvania State University, they actually say that for all small angles, the amplitude or the angular displacement of the bulb does not affect the period of oscillation. So in this case, since uh, it was small and it has already been stated, we cannot write it there. So we just remain with one other thing and that is the mass of the bob so the mass of the bob is one other factor that does not affect the period of the pendulum so therefore we are going to write there mass mass we are going to write the mass mass as our factor so mass of the pendulum does not affect the period then we go to the second part which is part b part b if the values of time for 20 oscillations obtained were 16.1 seconds 15.9 seconds 16.0 seconds 16.2 seconds and 15.8 seconds calculate the period of the pendulum if the values of time for 20 oscillations obtained were 
16.1 seconds, 15.9 seconds, 16.0 seconds, 16.2 seconds, and 15.8 seconds. Calculate the period of the pendulum. Now, the issue here is we have been given uh, time for 20 oscillation, which is greater than uh, one single time. We have been given one, two, three, four, five times for 20 oscillations. Therefore, for us to calculate the period, we first need to find the average time. That's when we can now calculate the period. So to do this, since it is average time, we are going to say T, allow me to use bar, so bar T for average time is equal to the summation of all the t's divided by the number of times so when we look at this we can then substitute and say the summation the summation will be 16.1 plus 15.9 plus 16.0 plus 16.2 plus 15.8 so we have all these then we divide these by five so we are going to divide this by five so by five so what we're going to get from here is actually uh the top part the top part this will be equal to we have 16.1 plus 15 this gives us 80.0 80.0 over 5. Now, 80.0 over 5, this is equal to uh, 16.0 seconds. So this, so, this is our average time. Therefore, we can now calculate the period of the pendulum. Now, we know that period, capital letter T, is equal to small letter t divided by what divided by the number of oscillations n take note the n i'm using here is different from the n i used when calculating for average okay now here n represents the number of oscillations while there n represented the number of uh, times okay so these are different n's uh, it's all coming from the mathematics eh, part. Now, we are now going to substitute. So we have 16.0 divided by divided by 20. So 16.0 divided by 20 actually gives us 0 0.8 seconds. This is because we are dealing with it period so it is given in seconds so here finally here we are now going to write uh, 0 0.8 0 0.8 seconds and we are done now you can see that there was a lot of work that was needed there from finding the average time to now calculating the period itself and finally, uh, writing the answer down with the correct units, hence the three marks. You can see they actually were very generous when it came to, to, to awarding marks. We proceed to part C. Mm -hmm. Part C says, calculate the frequency of the pendulum. Calculate the frequency of the pendulum. Now, the frequency here uh, we know there is a relationship between period 
and frequency. And we know that frequency, small letter f, is equal to 1 over period. So we've already calculated the period, so we're just going to substitute it in this formula. So we are now going to have, we are now going to have 1 divided by 0 0.8. So what is 1 divided by 0 0.8? 1 divided by 0 0.8 is actually 1.25. So 1.25. 1.25 what? 1.25 hertz. So it's hertz. That is our frequency. So with all that done, we need to bring the frequency to where it's supposed to be. So we're going to write 1.25 hertz. Hertz is capital letter Z, uh, capital letter X, small letter Z. So that, uh, my dear viewers, brings us to the end of the question. Uh, don't forget to subscribe if you're viewing it for the first time. We will, in the next video, be looking at question B2. Thank you very much. Uh, see you next time.